Okay, happy Friday. It's actually a Thursday night, but I'm going to drop this tomorrow on Friday. If you are interested in music, you should watch this. If you're interested in how to read a frequency response graph, this will help a little bit. We're going to do a series once a week, and we're going to cover all the instruments that are within the music library that I have. I'm going to take us right now. This is the intro portion. The main body of this video is going to look a lot different. Let me get to H-I-J-K. And then let's get to Led Zeppelin right here. I'm going to throw up a picture of a drum kit. And uh, there's two symbols that are regular parts of a uh, general drum kit. One is a, a crash symbol and another is a ride. I'm going to talk about a crash symbol today. And that's it. We're going to talk just about that. Um, and there's a picture maybe of John Bonham. And he, holding his left hand, is about to hit that part of his own kit, which is an event that occurs repeatedly in Hey Hey What Can I Do uh, off the CODA album, and I use it regularly in evaluations. We're going to talk about today things that should be of interest to you because it's related to a frequency response graph, not a, of any particular set, but of all sets. We're going to talk about a few things. I'll give you a preview of what's about to come, and it's going to switch into a full screen mode of the spectrogram. Um, and I'll be talking during that because there's a microphone right there. And again, it will sound different because this is, uh, in my opinion, a much better quality mic that I'm using now than that mic. We're going to talk about that moment where bottom stick is just about to hit the crash. Um, where, where exactly on the frequency response is that stick striking that? We can find it, um, and we will, because it's very easy. And then we're going to isolate that just so you can see clearly exactly where that is on a frequency response graph. And then we're going to continue along and we're going to go to the gain region, which is the compensation for something being in your ear as opposed to outside of your head. And we're going to go from 2,000 to about 8 to 10,000, which is the area that's usually boosted up. And how does that affect and what is there for this particular piece of kit? And then we're going to isolate it into a filter that is just going to cover 2,000, roughly, kilohertz area. And then 3,000, and 4,000, and 5, and on up to 8, 9, and 10, which is areas that are typically elevated with IEMs. And we're going to see what that sounds like. And what, when that area is boosted on earphones, what this is going to be, because it's this, but it would be louder. And then we're going to go higher. We're going to go to the, the harmonic death of that event. Remember, a symbol is something that wobbles when it's struck, so it's doing the same thing with small uh, decreases until itself stops moving and it no longer gives off any um, audible sonic info. And this spectrogram is reading um, audio and it's displaying it in a visual. So I, I think some people are going to love this series. Other people are going to just fall away. The people that are really into this, I got to say, that's I'm that person. If I saw this video on the internet, I would definitely watch it, and I would watch it to the end because this is the kind of stuff that I dig. So me doing the kind of stuff that I dig, which is not what I usually do, is kind of, I'm stoked for this. It's going to be kind of rough, the first video. It'll get better in the second. The next video will probably be a four-string bass guitar, um, EADG, Eat a Dead Grasshopper, um, and then maybe a kick drum, male female vocals. Vocals are fascinating when you start to cut it up with filters and find out what happens where, where you start to pick up lyrics, where you don't pick it up anymore, um, how much you can remove and still catch the song, and how much you need. It's all, it's fascinating stuff. That's, this is the intro. Um, we're going to, again, go into a full screen mode and the audio quality is going to be different because I'm using uh, a different microphone. And then when that's done, we're going to come out and then finish up back in this form and then the video will complete. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so video four, let's get OCD with audio and this would be the symbol. This is a symbol crash. Let's go ahead and listen to the file that we have today real quick there we go that's enough it's a very brief audio of a drummer striking um, a symbol and we're gonna go ahead and 
do a few things. We're going to do videos about uh, bass guitars, 4 or 5 string, um, acoustic guitars, electric guitars with and without distortion pedals, full drum kits, uh, kick drums, um, male and female vocals, which is fascinating, pianos, other instruments. You guys can give suggestions below. Um, more that you know, the further that you can go. It's kind of a meme, but it's true, so let's go ahead and get some knowledge. The first thing we want to do is take a look at our working area. And the top left is a visualization of audio. It's taking one of your senses and combining it with another, which I find to be very appealing. So we're looking at um, the initial event. Um, in this case, it's starting with the stick striking, and that would be on the left side and moving to the right across time, the time scale on the bottom. On the top right, we have... Uh, amplitude scale basically this would be covering the range that your earphones can cover and is showing how much energy is being applied uh, across again this is just a small snippet of a cymbal crash but this is where the energy occurs the first thing that we want to do um, with all the videos is isolate the event itself whether it's a uh, a pick hitting a string on a guitar or a finger pulling on a string on a bassist uh, on a bass guitar we want to isolate where the stick is hitting the cymbal. And since, again, this is starting with the stick striking, it's going to be on this left side top panel. And we can see by the intensity of the red that it's probably, very likely, right about here. So we'll go ahead and create a filter between 450 and get it a little smaller. And that should be... That should be the stick right there. Let's go ahead and see. And then we'll sweep above it and below it. We start to get the echo right there. Okay. I think we've found the strike, which would be... Mm, between 450 and 650. Let's go ahead and say that. Next thing we're going to do is, because these are earphones, the area that's most often elevated is between the ear gain, which is, let's say, including the moon drops, VSDF, I think it's called, which is usually around 3. It's typically around 2 to 2.5 to 3. So we'll go ahead and set a filter that starts from 2 to 8. There's 8. And this is covering most of the range. It's almost always elevated and let's play that and that sounds a lot like an incomplete symbol but it, it sounds like a symbol not an ideal replay but we can tell what that instrument is in future videos it's going to be hard to tell sometimes um, but this is the area on earphones that is usually boosted up for you so that you can catch it now let's go ahead and narrow the filter so that we're catching about about a thousand so we'll go to two to three to four and we'll listen to what that sounds like starting at two three four five six it's a weird lack of a problem at seven and it comes back here nine ten not comfortable you stop this right here this is about sixteen thousand sixteen thousand let me go ahead and widen this just a little bit That is a very uncomfortable sound right there. We're getting back into the body, really, of the cymbal here. And then we're getting into just harmonics of the cymbal vibrating. Now this is 8 to about 11. That's not very comfortable. 
and then from 11 to about 17. I'd say the louder we go, the more uncomfortable it gets. Now let me go ahead and capture the whole event, and you can listen to it as we widen the filter. So that's the full, that's all of the audio info. I'm going to narrow this down and now we're going to sweep with a wider band. A little bit wider than this. You, there's not much to catch here. Sweep up. Start to catch the stick. That's really all stick right there. When we get to a thousand hertz, the stick is really gone, and now we're listening to the symbol. And this is all 5,000 hertz and then off of the scale. And that's a symbol, and that's a spectrogram of it, and that's where it lives and starts at about 550. And the most annoying part for me personally would be really after 10 kilohertz. Um, there's a very odd, maybe it's my hearing personally, or you picked it up too. For some reason, 7,000 hertz doesn't seem to, there's like a dip in annoyance to me. I don't really find it to be a bother. Um, and as soon as we get to eight, it becomes an issue again. So that's the symbol um, crash. And I'll go ahead and stop this and then get back into the full um, video with my final thoughts. And that is a crash symbol. We took a look at it. We got, most people don't really get that deep into the weeds. Where is it? Where's the strike occur? Um, when people talk about shimmering or things seem to exist a little bit more than they think is natural, then now you know what they're talking about. It's the area um, that is kind of falling off and doesn't have a lot of info, but it's still boosted up. So they're catching it. So it gives the, the crash a little bit longer life than what their brain's expecting. Just talking milliseconds, but it happens. When somebody's talking about a shimmer, I, I, I don't like that said. It, 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 the symbols kind of give me a shimmer. I think they're talking about a little bit of extension, and we just took a look at where that probably is, and that would be because of an elevation. Instead of the decay um, and the dying off of the harmonics, it's still being kind of boosted up beyond where you might otherwise expect um, relative to the rest of the replay. The drum kit t in total um, in the music piece, the, the song um, itself also in total. So that's it for today. That's the crash symbol. That's where it is on the frequency graph um, in the gain area and how far up it generally goes. We're going to talk about the ride at a later date. We're going to talk about a full drum kit. The next instrument will probably be a four string EADG um, bass guitar. Because the bass guitar doesn't simply exist in the bass, as the word bass guitar implies. It's, it goes way beyond that. And tuning in other parts of the frequency response impact the quality replay of a bass guitar. Bassists know this. Uh, producers know this. But you, you might or you might not. But we'll, we'll definitely learn more when we do the next video. The next video will be earphone reviews. Thank you guys for indulging me today. I, I love this stuff. I love this stuff. I love beaches, I love snorkeling, I love scuba diving, I love cheeseburgers, I love music, I love getting into the next level, the drill down, which is what we just did together, so thank you for going with me. Um, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe, I'd appreciate that. Comment below if you like this video, give me a suggestion for other instruments um, that you might be interested. Some music I, I won't get dinged with, like classical. There's so many instruments in classical. That there's so many options that we can do with this series. But it'll be once a week, and it'll be a Friday or Saturday. And this is episode one, and this is the crash symbol. And we are done. You guys have an awesome weekend, and I am out.